PM Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad has dismissed criticism over Kazana National's potential involvement in the country's third national car project via its subsidiary Silterra Malaysia. Silterra, which makes chips for vehicles among others, was named as one of the potential partners for the project. However, MCA Deputy President Dato Sri Dr. Wika Siong has voiced concern that this would cast doubts on Putrajaya's promise that public funds would not be used to fund the project. In response, Mahathir said that Kazana is not government. It is a company that is quite free to do business. Therefore, if there is a company in Kazana that is interested to participate in the project, he says they can invest. Silterra was founded in November 1995 as Wafer Technology Malaysia to promote front-end semiconductor manufacturing and catalyse high-technology investments in Malaysia. It is Kazana's second-largest loss-making unit, with losses at 5.5 billion ringgit. Yesterday, Entrepreneur Development Minister Mohammad Rezwan Yusof said that his ministry was shortlisting two to three partners to participate in the third national car project, including Silterra and CTRM. He said he expects the selection to be concluded by year-end, with the prototype for the car model to be ready by early next year. We had pointed out that CTRM appears to refer to Composite Technology Research Malaysia, a unit of DRB Highcom whose controlling shareholder is Tan Sri Syed Mokhtar Abukari. The 1 billion ringgit super yacht Equanimity, linked to Lotik Joe, is expected to have a new owner in two months' time. This is after the government and 1MDB received the go-ahead from the KL High Court to appoint an appraiser and brokers for the sale. Senior lawyer Sitpa Silveratnam says the appraiser, based in the UK, will begin evaluating the worth of the yacht. Meanwhile, brokers can start on the necessary paperwork on the 300.2-foot vessel's condition and specifications. Sitpa is a senior maritime lawyer who is part of 1MDB's legal team. She expects the yacht to be put up for bidding in the next few weeks. Sidpa acknowledges that the luxury yacht market is a niche one and that the number of potential buyers is small. But she is hopeful that it will be sold by early December. Seized in August, the equanimity is currently berthed in Port Klang. It is said to have been bought using monies siphoned from 1MDB. Lo and the company that owns the luxury yacht, Equanimity Cayman, have condemned the seizure and the plan to sell the boat saying it is indisputably clear that it goes entirely against the interests of the yacht and will drastically reduce its potential sale value. Slamming Putrajaya's precipitous, ill-conceived and misguided actions, the company said a sale would be a remarkable violation of due process and international legal comity and would call into question the actual ownership of the yacht for any potential buyer. Tan Sri Mohammad Noor Mohammad Yusuf, who currently chairs Malaysia Airlines, is reportedly planning to leave the national carrier by the end of 2018. Citing people familiar with the matter, Bloomberg reports that Mohammad Noor plans to focus on his role as chairman of Lembaga Tabung Haji. It said its sources asked not to be identified because the information is private. Mohammad Noor was appointed to the post in the Pilgrims Fund in July. He had previously helmed Malaysian Airlines System as Managing Director from February 2001 to March 2004. He has been the carrier's chairman since August 2011. Previously, Mohammad Noor had also served as chairman of the Securities Commission as well as CIMB Group Holdings. He was also a director and executive committee chairman at Kazana National before the entire board resigned in July after being publicly chastised by PM Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad, who claimed the Sovereign Wealth Fund had deviated from its original objectives. The Pakatan Harapan Presidential Council has yet to decide on the best policy for political funding. Its chairman, Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad, says the new administration wants to avoid the possibility of corruption. However, it has yet to come to a final decision. He says one possibility would be to emulate the policy in Germany, whereby political parties get an equal allocation from the government. In Germany, political parties raise funds through a combination that includes membership fees and donations from individuals or companies. 
They also rely on annual subsidies by the government, using taxpayers' money. Mahade says this method is aimed at avoiding situations where political parties accept bribes masquerading as donations. He reveals that a company had recently attempted to donate 100 million ringgit to Tabung Harapan, a fund created on May 30th to enable Malaysians to make donations to reduce the country's debt levels. However, the government turned it down because it was clear that the said company must have other intentions. The Prime Minister says if Putrajaya had accepted the offer, the government would have gone back to the old culture. He adds that an in-depth study is necessary to ensure there are no elements of corruption in political funding. Pakatan Harapan's funds are depleting rapidly and the ruling party must come up with a formula to finance the party soon. As of today, Tabung Harapan has garnered 195.6 million ringgit in donations. That laden high flux, the Singapore water treatment firm trying to sell its Stoa Spring plant says it remains actively engaged in talks with potential investors for both the project and the rest of the group. The SGX listed firm said in a statement that it has not committed itself to any particular option or proposals. It did not name any potential investors in its statement and said it could not comment on specific details on the divestment process. To recap, Highflux filed for court-supervised debt restructuring in May. It has been trying to sell its loss-making desalination and power plant to help, among others, pay off Maybank, the facility's sole secured lender. But Bloomberg says Semcorp is the only bidder for Tuas Spring, and it made an offer below the project's book value of 1.47 billion Singapore dollars. This would not be enough to pay back Maybank in full.